try. Do you mind? One of my favourite TV series of all time is Futurama. The fantastic writing and exquisite voiceover work has made it a legendary show in TV history. With its vast range of settings and sci-fi theme, you'd think the series would be ripe for video game spin-offs. Well, only two video games were ever released under the Futurama name. One was a freemium mobile game similar to Simpsons Tapped Out, and the other was a 3D platforming game released for the Xbox and PS2 simply called Futurama. The game was released in 2003 and developed by Unique Development Studios. It plays as a classic 3D platformer and has all the conventions you'd expect from a title of this generation. There's different weapons to use and many collectibles to find. You have four different characters to play as. Fry's stages are more focused on gun combat, whereas Bender's stages are mostly platforming focused. Leela's stages have a focus on hand-to-hand -hand combat, and there's a stage where you play as Zoidberg riding an alien through a dangerous swamp. The game truly feels like an interactive version of the show, as you have lots of the Futurama staff working on it. Matt Groening oversaw development, while David X. Cohen directed many of the Futurama voiceover cast. Christopher Ting returns to compose the music, and Jay Stewart Burns returns to writing duties by creating the plot. The Futurama staff considered this game to be the 73rd episode of Futurama, so David X. Cohen put together all the cutscenes plus some gameplay, and included the final video on the Beast with a Billion Backs DVD labelled as The Lost Adventure. For the plot, Farnsworth reveals that the Planet Express company has been sold to Mon, giving her more than 50% ownership of the Earth, which prompts her to enslave humanity. The crew escape Earth, but with Mum hot on their heels, with the aim to capture Farnsworth and forcing him to build an engine powerful enough to move the Earth in attempts to turn the planet into a warship. In terms of graphics, the designers of the game did a great job in bringing the TV series to life. There's loads of detail in the environments, especially in the Planet Express building. There's lots of jokes dotted around too. The characters look really good being rendered in a cel-shaded style. Adding to that the quality of the voice acting, the game really does feel like a lost episode. Unfortunately, where the game lacks in is the gameplay, which is the vital part of a platformer. On the most part, you can get by if you have the patience, but issues with the lock-on system and repetitive puzzles drag the game right down. The biggest complaint though would have to be the camera. It really does struggle to find the best angle for you a lot of the time. Moments in the game you will be fighting with it, as it will want to completely block your view for some reason. If you're a massive fan of Futurama like me, you can look past the faults the game has and enjoy the fantastic writing and voice acting. With some more variety to the gameplay and an improved camera system, this game could have been a highly regarded platformer for the 6th generation consoles. Saying that, the game isn't overly bad and is certainly better than some reviewers made it out to be. It is a true shame that they didn't release a title during the time the TV series was revived during 2008 and 2013, as all we have is a boring freemium game called Futurama Worlds of Tomorrow on Android and iOS. With the show cancelled yet again, the chances of a truly great Futurama game being released is slim to none.